everyone. Welcome back to The Psychedelic Entrepreneur. I'm so excited for today's solo episode with me. I am going to be sharing a process that I've used for myself and for some of my clients to work with psychedelics and get some answers in your business. So I know this might sound very triggering for some, right? Like, ooh, psychedelics, business, money, uh, like we can't put those together. But actually, um, you know, if, if this is something that's coming up for you, like why is she talking about business with something as sacred as psychedelics or plant medicines? Um, I would ask you, what is the point of working with psychedelics? You know, like when you really dive deep into it, Ask yourself, what is, it, what is it all about? You know, why why are they here? Why are they here for the expansion of our consciousness, for uh, humanity at this time or, you know, all the times, right? Ancient times. Like, why do you feel that psychedelics are even here on this planet? And today, you know, we can't deny that we are living in the current year of 2022 as I record this. And there is a reality to the world that we're in right now. So currently, we still have money, right? I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Who knows if money is still going to exist. But we still do have this thing called money, which pays for things um, in this, you know, illusion of exchange that we're all agreeing upon, right? Or pretty much everybody. And there is a reality to making money and paying your bills and being able to support you and have a, you know, the life that you want. So let's just get that out of the way, right? I actually did a whole entire episode about money. <laughs> I'll probably do a few more episodes about money as well. But then when you ask yourself, you know, your intentions for working with psychedelics or sacred plant medicines or any other sacred medicines, um, very often I know that people, including myself, dive into this work to heal something, right? To um, help calm the depression or ease the anxiety or get past traumas. And yes, that will always be a part of it, right? Like to me, whether that's your intention or not, it's all interconnected. Uh, even with business or your career or work, um, you know, very often what is stopping people in the success that they want or the momentum that they want or bringing something into reality inside of their business or their work, what is actually at the core of what's stopping them are these limiting beliefs and blocks, I put that in quotes, blocks, energetic blocks that are stopping people. And really, when you dive deep into like what is an actual block, it is it does actually come down to having some kind of trauma pattern stored inside your body and your energy field. So it's all interconnected. So then, you know, let's dive deep into the business side. So let's say you are a newer entrepreneur or you have a business, but maybe there's something a little off. Maybe you want more clients. Maybe you want to make more money. Maybe you don't know where to go next. Maybe you don't know if you even have the right business. Maybe you're not clear on what it is that you want to bring to the world. Maybe you're not clear on what your purpose is or what's next for your business and your growth. And this is where I say, look, um, you know, psychedelics, we can be psychonauts and travelers and just go into the space as we work with psychedelics and see what manifests, right? Like there's always going to be something that comes forward. And of course, there are different theories as to what this is working, you know, like how this works and what psychedelics do and unlock. And of course, we know the neuroscience and the chemistry behind it. But really, like, what are these, you know, downloads and thoughts and, um, you know, visions that actually come through in psychedelics? I believe when when you are in a space of the truth, um, like in a pure surrender, open hearted space, what happens is it's, I believe, like your higher self or some version of this, right? You can call it anything. Um you know, there's different theories on what the higher self even is, right? So you can say it's it's spirit coming through you. You can say it's your unconscious. You can say it's a higher higher power, a higher source, your higher self. Um, there's people that believe it's actually just you, you know, you and your mind. And it's just now being like kind of unlocked, you know, that psychedelic is the key that unlocks this space that then allows 
what is already inside of you to come through. So here's the thing, regardless of what you believe, it doesn't actually matter. Um, there is an opportunity to work with psychedelics for innovation, creativity, ideas, um, you know, bringing new things to life, um, you know, coming up with new business ideas, solutions to problems. And um, it's interesting. I've been asked this a lot when I do my own podcast interviews where people are interviewing me. I've been asked very often, have you, you know, did you create your business with psychedelics? And or, you know, some other version of that question. And it's been interesting because I I guess I've been lucky. I've always been very tapped into my heart. At a very young age, I was very aware of what I was here to do. I was aware of what something inside of me felt like my truth, which I now believe to be it's my soul, right? It's like we all have souls that incarnate at this time for a reason, right? To evolve and learn and grow. And it's here to learn lessons and it's here to do certain things and have certain experiences. And I think some people are really tapped into their soul a lot more than others, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't mean anything, but it just is. And I think when you're on this path of spiritual growth and sacred plant medicines and other sacred medicines and psychedelic work, you're actually asking for your soul to incarnate and embody into your being more than maybe someone who's not. Whether you're aware of this or not, there's a reason why you're, you're coming to work with psychedelics, right? So I believe that when you are stepping into, let's say, the next step in your career or entrepreneurship, let's say you don't like what you do for a living and you know it's not really what you're here to do and you feel something bigger calling you. I always say it's a calling, right? When people step into especially transformational entrepreneurship or healing or coaching or any of these modalities like 99.9% .9 of my clients, I do believe it's more of a soul's calling versus, okay, I'm just going to go make money because I have to and not like any of it and I don't really care about my job, right? So it's like we can see the difference here. One is something that's coming from deep inside of your heart that really lights you up, that has you feel called to, let's say, give back or help others or create change on the planet. And the other is really just um, going through the motions to make the money and, you know, survive, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's no judgment here. But if you're moving into this place of really tapping into what is it that you want to be doing? What is it that you want to be doing next? What is it that you're here for? Let's say, I mean, for me, it happened in my 30s uh, when I really started. I mean, it actually started long before this, but really in my early 30s, I started questioning everything. Like, what is this all about? You know, why am I in a career that I hate and just on this path and I'm going to do this the rest of my life? And I really just started questioning, like, what was life all about? Was was the whole point of working? What is this whole money making thing all about? And is life about making money and not being happy, but then just trying to create happiness in the other areas of your life? you know, which is a, a huge amount of our population does, right? It's like, okay, I make a lot of money so that I can then be happy when I'm not at work. And there's, again, there's nothing wrong with it. But I started really questioning if that was what it was all about, because this is what I was shown, right? I had parents that worked and I don't know if they were really doing their soul's work. You know, I think to some level they were because, I also believe that your soul is here to do what it's here to do, um, regardless if it's maybe a life of suffering versus a life of joy and peace and happiness. Either way, the soul has come to do that for a reason, right? It's like it's still learning its lesson. So when I I started working with psychedelics at a fairly young age, when I was 14 and got pretty into them, you know, as a teenager and then my 20s and and 30s. So essentially, 
you know, I only had breaks of like maybe a few years at the max. Um, but essentially, it's been a big part of my spiritual and personal growth path. I've also been deep into meditation and psychology and neuroscience and other forms of exploring what is really going on in our being, right? Like what's really going on in our brain? What is this all about? What is life all about? And so what I started doing when I started working with more intentional psychedelics, meaning yes, at a young age, it was definitely more recreational. It was, you know, party environment or just with friends or fun. But I remember, I think it was in my late 20s or early, yeah, probably late 20s where I really first noticed the potential for psychedelics to unlock deeper meanings and truths in life and not so much just like seeing cool things and like having a different perception. Um, You know, even at a young age, like my very first LSD trip definitely unlocked some questions, right? Like it was pretty intense and amazing at a ripe young age of 14 to really question what is this all about and what is the whole point of everything. And so when I started working on a deeper level with intentional psychedelics, meaning um, in ceremonial settings or quieter settings or solo settings, I, I would start just by asking these questions like, what is my purpose? Like, what is this all about? Um, And kind of leaving it a little open-ended. And, you know, sometimes I would get answers and sometimes I would go in with a totally different intention and only get answers on my purpose. Um, And very often I would get answers that were very vague, right? Like they were kind of shown in symbols or images that didn't make any sense at the time. But here's, here's what I've done with clients in the past and this is what I want to teach you. So there's two ways you can go about this, right? Let's say you're struggling with something in your business. Like there's something that is not, the key has not unlocked yet and there's not the abundance flowing. It's not feeling aligned. It's not going well. And you want to figure out what the problem is. And maybe you feel stuck. Maybe you just can't figure out what's going on or you don't have clarity or you desire something that hasn't manifested yet. Um, You can work with this in, with your intention. So of course, I'm sure you've heard about setting intentions with psychedelics. But when you go in with something around your business or your purpose or your career, um, you can set them in a different way. And this is something I like to do where it's kind of this, this state of having an intention, but also surrendering and letting go. So One thing you can do, so I, in my group mastermind and my private coaching programs, my clients get other support from, for example, a good friend of mine who does a really intense, deep, deep level form of astrology where it's a like a two to three hour session that really has you get a deeper insight into your soul's purpose. Um, this is not, this is not normal astrology. This is much deeper where it's, it's almost like contemplation. Um, And I actually was recently talking to some people in my free Psychedelics and Purpose Facebook group about using the gene keys in psychedelic uh, settings. And so I've taken things like my soul's purpose, astrology reading and gene keys and human design and Akashic Record readings, and um, other like golden nuggets that have come through my own intuition, through my meditations, through my path, through my journey, and brought those in as just a general contemplation, meaning none of these modalities, actually nothing, like nothing out there is going to just give you all the answers. Um, I don't believe any of that exists. I've heard that Iboga gives all the answers, but then again, I've seen many people do Iboga and they don't seem any different. So I don't know if I believe that there is one thing that will just give you all the answers. Um, So including psychedelics, by the way, (laughs) including all psychedelics. So what you can do is bring it into a contemplation, you know, like bring in these little golden nuggets from your life, these little... Um, Like maybe it's this one reading or maybe your gene keys or maybe it's understanding your human design or um, getting to know your, uh, you know, personality patterning, like your um, 
defense patterning. Like I, you can go into anything and bring these into a contemplation and then set an intention around it. Like, and again, um, this is about bringing it into intention, maybe using it as a mantra, but also letting go. So it's, it, this is a huge piece of letting go of the attachment to getting answers and finding out what to do and knowing, you know, it's like the human mind wants to know everything and wants to know the answers and wants to know the future and know how things are going to go. But it is actually impossible for everybody, including the best psychics in the world. So bring in your intention. Let's say it's, um, uh, for example, I'll talk about something in my business. There's something I am supposed to be launching and I'm kind of feeling a little iffy about it. Um, part of it's because I went through just a massive, um, uh, let's say dis-ease, like a sickness the last couple months. So I'm just coming back from that. So I had to really just go easy on myself. Uh, and then two, it's like I really only believe in bringing things to fruition that feel really in alignment with my heart and soul. Like they have to feel right. They have to feel good. And um, this one thing, I'm not sure. I'm like, oh, maybe the timing, like maybe I just don't do it. Maybe I only do it in the fall. Um, you know, and it's, I love serving my clients, but, you know, launching a whole offering, you know, to me has to be done from a place of alignment. So let's say I'm going into a psychedelic session or a ceremony. And what I would do is bring this into, uh, like a mantra. So, and, you know, I use the word prayer very often as well. I know some people don't like the word prayer, but it's it's really all the same. Um, I do actually do believe if you call it a prayer and you make a real intention to connect with all your guides, your angels, your teachers, your ancestors, whoever you call in, and make a prayer is actually much more powerful than just having an intention. But either way, it still works, right? There's no right way and there's no wrong way. Spirit is not judging you. <laughs> Spirit is not saying that's the right way or wrong way. So anyways, what you can do is bring it into um, like a really short sentence. And by the way, I've learned this from multiple teachers, including friends of mine and healers I've worked with and people, you know, people in my um, on my medicine path. So I like to credit everybody else um, because we're all learning from each other anyways. Right. But what you can do is bring it into like a, a very simple sentence around help me see or help me release or help me um, guide me, you know, like very like unattached and more in the place of, hey, you know, please guide me, please show me, like please illuminate um, versus like I want or give me. Do you see the difference in these energies, right? One is really um, open and open-hearted and loving and also leaving room for the co-creation with the divine, meaning the divine always has a plan for you, whether you want this plan or not, right? And it usually is something better that you can't even see, right? So the more you leave the space for the divine to come in and co-create with you, the more it actually will. So I highly recommend formulating like a one simple sentence around this. So maybe it's something like, um, help me get clarity around my new offer or help me, help me to, you know, guide me, guide me with this new offer. Actually, something I've done for many, many years and I still do, and I always recommend this to my clients is just ask, how can I be of service? You know, it's a very loose, general intention that is really coming from this place of um, wanting to help, wanting to serve. And if you leave that space for the divine to come in and co-create with you, you will start to get some answers around it. So that's a very simple one. Please guide me in, you know, my path of service. Um, help me to serve. Show me how I can serve. Use me as a vessel. Use me as a channel for service, for healing and transformation. Um, something I've been doing for many years is, you know, I have this beautiful piece of land um, with trees and bees and garden and just hawks and I could go on and on. Anyways, I have a beautiful piece of land 
in upstate New York um, on three and a half acres. And what I do is I I commune with the earth and I say, okay, um, you know, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve you. I'm in service to Gaia. I'm in service to humanity. Um, use me, you know, like just show me the way. Use me as a vessel. I am here to serve you, um, guide me towards my path. And I have loosely done this for many, many years, um, sometimes very like intentionally into a ceremony and sometimes very just general, like it's just part of my daily prayer. And what's happened over the years is, and maybe it's just me, I don't know. I mean, it's me and a lot of my clients too, by the way. Um, I've gotten a lot of answers. Uh, I was actually guided towards speaking about this interconnection with psychedelics, sacred medicines, purpose, and conscious entrepreneurship. I was guided through medicine work to talk about this and make this part of my path. Um, I didn't actually like that idea for a few years. Um, I argued against it. I didn't think it was a possible, and I didn't think it was for me. But after some time, and here's the next step, by the way, I brought it into a contemplation. So I've actually had a lot of clients come to me and do this integration work, right? Like I am not calling myself an integration coach, but honestly, a lot of my clients are doing psychedelic integration within my programs because they're on this path as well. So what they say is, oh, I had these ideas come through this ceremony or, you know, the psychedelic experience, but they seem, you know, undoable or unachievable or how the hell can I do that or I'm not ready for that or I'm not qualified or like who am I to do that I have imposter syndrome and I say look like all you can do you know obviously you can do a lot of mindset work and therapeutic work which we go into inside of my group programs but in the meantime just bring it into a contemplation just start to get inquisitive and curious around these visions that came through start to ask yourself, like, what would that be like? So for me, I, I've talked about this before on, I think, one or two other episodes. In 2016, I had this very profound vision on, I was on a dieta in Peru where we do, you know, five ceremonies with um, sacred ayahuasca over a 10-day period and also diet other master plants. And it was on my very last... My very last day, the last ceremony, I was laying down outside on a bench and I had this vision that came through that was so profound. I remember it as clear as day. And it showed me this vision of, and I, back then I had just kind of started my coaching business, but wasn't really super serious. Like I had some clients, but I wasn't like out there on the internet going crazy yet. Um, and I had this vision of just helping people who were on this same path. And I knew they were all, you know, medicine people and spiritually, you know, spiritually aligned people and people who are here to help others. And it showed me this vision of me helping them get them, their work and themselves out to the world so that they can help more people. And it showed me doing this. And I was like, wow, that was, and it was beautiful. I just remember being like, it was so beautiful because in the vision, it was pure heart energy. It was no attachment to the money. It was no attachment to the outcome, the success, whether it was going to work or not, whether it was going to get clients. It like didn't didn't even show me any of that. It just showed me the the energy and the vision of just helping people from the pureness of helping people. And so I had recently read The Surrender Experiment, which I highly recommend. I recommend it to all my clients. And I decided to just go on a surrender experiment with this vision and bring it into my daily meditation and visioning and contemplation and just bring it into my life. Like, okay, well, what does that mean? What does this mean? Same thing with astrology or gene keys or human design or whatever it is, your Akashic record reading. You know, it's it's not about just getting it once and then like the answers come through. It's about like, okay, how do I work with this? How do I use it as a guiding light or as a potentiality that exists out there in the field? And how do I tap into this so that maybe one day it actually starts to unfold? And so that's what I did. And this is what I teach my clients to do is, 
You can bring in your intention into the psychedelic work. And then when you start to get the downloads, when you start to get the ideas that come through, um, first of all, I know a lot of people say journal, like write down after your medicine ceremony what came through. I personally actually don't journal that much. Um, sometimes I do, but not always. But I also tend to have a very, uh, I've always had a very vivid imagination and I've always had a very sharp mind. So when I see very important things in my ceremonies, I tend to remember all of them, um, which can also be a curse, by the way. <laughs> I can do a whole podcast on that. Um, but then just bring this into the day-to-day -day contemplation. Bring it into a daily prayer. Like um, you can ask, ask to help illuminate what this means. It'll help me understand if this is possible. Help me help this to unfold in my reality. You know, and here's the thing. Very often, these medicines will also trick us, meaning you might have the ego coming through and giving you visions, right? Like, then what about that? But that's where you have to really be discerning and feel into it, like feel into the possibility. So, of course, when I was shown multiple visions about what I was here to do, um, I didn't believe them because I actually, I actually thought it was just like the ego playing a trick on me. And then they kept coming through and coming through and coming through. And I was like, well, wait a second. What if this was possible? What if I could bring this into my business? What if I could talk about psychedelics and purpose together? What would happen? What could happen? And that's how I started just playing with it and contemplating it. And then within a couple years, I ended up launching my first psychedelic summit. So like two and a half years later, um, Something like that. Almost, yeah, it was like about two and a half years that I finally was like, ooh, maybe it's a reality. But during that two and a half years, I really worked with this, these visions that came through the psychedelics and my intentions and my prayers to be guided and have it unfold. And this is what I really encourage you to give give it a try. And this can go for anything with your business, with um, money blocks, abundance blocks, um, mindset, getting past your imposter syndrome, not getting clear, you're not being clear on your business, like anything you feel like there's a potentiality out there and you just haven't tapped into it yet, you can really set this intention and work with the medicine. And again, you have to remember, and this is, you know, maybe I'll do another episode on this. The medicines you're working with, and I actually believe that all medicines have spirits. I believe all things, all anything in our reality has a spirit, right? Because everything is spirit. Um, some people don't agree with that, right? They might say like, LSD isn't a spirit, but ayahuasca is, fine. Whatever you want to believe. But I believe it all has a spirit. So you have to remember when you're working with, let's say, psilocybin or ayahuasca or iboga or, um, you know, toad medicine or even combo, whatever it is, all of these sacred medicines have a spirit. They have a being, like an energy, whatever you want to call it, a personality. Um, you know, I've worked with flower essences where I've literally seen their personality. And when you connect with the spirits and ask for guidance and say your prayers and work together with them, including the spirit of psilocybin or the spirit of lion's mane or the spirit of water you know i here i am drinking uh some yerba mate it's like there is a spirit to this beautiful plant and when you ask the spirits for help and guidance and support and you start to actually connect with them on this deeper level your experiences will be so much more profound you will get so much more out of them because it is not just about ingesting a substance and letting it change your chemistry so that you then have a psychedelic experience and then you come back eventually. It's not just about that. It is literally about connecting to this, the spirits that are here to guide us, help us, heal us, teach us. So the more you can do that, these are the three big points. And maybe I'll write up a little uh, guide for this. But the intention, the contemplation, and then also really the connection. The connection of your prayer to all the other factors at work. And, you know, there's much more we can tap into here. It's like work with your water, work with your food, work with the air, you know, the land that you're on, everything. Like every time I drink water, it's like I try to remember, like this is actually a healing spirit that's here for us. It's not just water that flows out of the tap. It's literally 
It's our life force, right? And same with air, that is spirit. So anyways, I could talk forever about this, but I wanted to just give these tips so that you can start really putting some intention into your work with sacred medicines and psychedelics and see how it helps you in your business. And then, of course, if you get to a point where you're like, okay, I got it. Now I need business support. That's what I'm here for, of course. <laughs> but it's just, a, it's a beautiful process. This is why I got into this work is because I loved helping my clients be able to integrate their psychedelic experiences and their medicine work into their life's purpose, into their work, into their business, and start to make money while actually doing what they love, being fulfilled, and co-creating this beautiful new earth that we're all here to create and creating transformation on the planet. And that's what I'm here for. That's what my soul's purpose is. And I hope you enjoyed this. I would love to hear it in any comments or you can feel free to just email me. I would love to hear if you give this a try and to see what's come through. Um, anyways, if you like this episode or you like any of the other episodes in The Psychedelic Entrepreneur, I would love to have a review. It would mean a lot to me. And all you have to do is go on Apple, leave a five-star review, and write a line or two. I would really appreciate it. Lots of love, and I'll see you on next week's episode. Bye.